Hey, welcome. I'd like to give you a quick tour of Omnica. We're one of the best equipped product design and development companies in America. We've been in business since 1984, primarily developing medical products. And I'd like to take this opportunity to give you a better view of what we do here. Starting in this room, we have a little bit of a museum, lots of examples of things. This is the most complicated thing we ever did. It was released in 2009, called the Plex ID for Abbott Molecular. Uh, we designed all of this, but this is one extreme of the kind of complexity we do. And then we'll do things all the way down to consumables and very small parts. So let's take a look. One of the key features of our facility are our conference rooms because we do remote project management on a regular basis. We have four multimedia conference rooms and the ability to do on the spot product development reviews weekly. So again, as you walk around, you'll see lots of examples of things. Being in business for 36 years gives us a very large breadth of different kinds of projects. And then we'll walk down the long hallway. It's our awards counter. Uh, almost everything you see is a model or a prototype. And our model making capabilities are at the best high level. We can do co-molding, machining, CNC, um, casting, urethane parts and silicon molds. Uh, we have a very extensive prototyping capability. We got to do the last pH meter before Dr. Beckman died at, at Beckman Coulter. So that was a great product. Um, with the big machine we saw a few moments ago won the 2009 Wall Street Journal Technology of the Year Award. So we're very proud of that. We can do scale models. Here are some small scale models. This is uh, an alpha prototype that we did for the Plex ID. We can make small models. This is actually five feet tall. Um, our, our model making capabilities are very good. We have jigs and fixtures for production. We can make large parts. This is uh, actually silicon mold, in-house molding. We are experts in injection molding. We've done thousands of parts over the years. Uh, we can build functional prototypes that are indistinguishable from the real product. Now we'll move on to the electrical engineering area. Here's where we do the schematics, the board layouts, the electronic design. We do the breadboards, testing. We have four electrical engineers. And here's a small miniaturized part that we're developing. We'll do lab view experiments. So part of what we do is make the prototypes work. The whole idea isn't just to make something that approximates, but we want to problem solve. We have a full-time regulatory person for doing our notified body work and making sure that we comply with the FDA and UL and all the different certification kinds of places. We're able to build prototypes ranging from alpha to beta prototypes to test out concepts. This device is now on the market, so we went from an alpha prototype to a beta prototype and it's now in production. Now we'll move into the mechanical engineering area. This is our metrics lab where we have optical comparators, we have a scanner, we have our pin gauges, all the equipment that we need to make sure that we reach the precision that we're setting out to, to comply. Um, this is a nice example of, of a beta prototype of a very complicated device. It has a rotary table, bus architecture, and we did all the development of this. This is a model that we built in-house. Our mechanical engineers use SolidWorks, as do our industrial designers, so we can work concurrently on projects uh, side by side. Here's some examples of some production fixtures that are going to be going into play very soon. This is a, a micro machining lab. This is a machine shop. We have a miniature lathe, miniature drill press, and we can make very tiny 
parts. This is for a brain aneurysm atherectomy end part and those two little parts actually screw together. So all of our mechanical engineers have enough room to, to set up their projects and, and work on them concurrently. And as we develop the CAD models, we send the data all the way to the other side of this wall to our machine shop. And here's where we can do CNC machining. Trung, our master machinist, is, is machining these parts right now, multiples. So we design this, we send it to him, or Andy, the, our other machinist, and they programmed it, and now we're making parts, and they're beautiful. The finish on them is extraordinary. So we can get high precision parts, and more importantly, we get them right away. Uh, we, we get a throughput here in a matter of hours. So we don't have to rely on outside resources to get into their queue and wait for them to make a part. We make parts right here. This is another one of our machining centers here. And we have a bed mill over here. This is another CNC machine. So we have a lot of cap capability here, a lot of capacity. Another one of our workhorse machines is a CNC lathe. We're making parts right now. They look like this. This is out of peak, very expensive, high performance thermoplastic. Here's some examples of CAD CAM where we take those CAD models and we program it and in a matter of a short period of time we get parts coming out of the other end. We have a regular lathe and in this end we have our deburring, our vibratory feeder, our surface grinder, our precision finishing devices. This is the Omnica RP lab. We have seven additive 3D printers. Three of them are, are objects. We have two FDM printers. We have two stereolithography printers. So each one of these serves a different purpose. We also have a CO2 laser in the corner over there. So we can do raster and vector cutting. And these are, as you're probably aware, a quick way to take a CAD model and get a part in your hand. So let's look in a goodie drawer here just for fun. The FDM printers make things out of ABS if we need something that's very strong. The polyjets are higher precision, but this gives us the ability to get things done very quickly. One of the challenges of new product development is getting low quantity examples of something that's actually functional. So we get a lot of interesting cha challenges. Um, this is a wearable electrode. That's something that has is an electronic circuit potted in here. Uh, we have investment casting where we might need a, an aluminum part that's difficult to mold or machine. So we'll investment cast it. This is a thermoplastic bellows. You can't go to a, a blow molder and ask them to make one bellows. Our Mike, our chief model maker, figure out a way to make it. So we get a lot of challenges where we have a very special need and uh, figure out a way to make one or two or 10 of something. So again, in-house, very quick. That's the idea. This is our industrial design group. We have four senior industrial designers, all of them very experienced. Um, our responsibility in industrial design is to make the human interface, the human experience work, uh, to make it appealing, attractive, to make it functional with respect to the user. CGI has gotten to an extreme now where we can take a 
CAD model, add lighting, add materials, and make extremely realistic images. This helps us get through the development process quicker because people can see that image, they can see the color, and they can get, we get buyout from our clients' teams on where we're going with the design. In the past, you had blueprints or, or 2D or three view models. Now we can give them very convincing imagery. So as you see, they, these images are, are very realistic. Another aspect of the collaboration between industrial design and mechanical engineering is we can concurrently work on assemblies. Two or three people can all work on the same assembly and we'll use data management to make sure that the latest iteration is the one being used. Tim's working on a graphic user interface. Uh, this is something that's on nearly every product now, it has electronics, has a user interface. Touch screens are prolific. So being doing something in a matter that's very intuitive and deductive is important. So getting that user interface down, you know how frustrating it is to work a, a fax machine, if you remember those. Well, we don't want to have that kind of issue. Okay, this is our casting lab. We are experts at soft tooling and making silicon molds. Rapid prototype part, we can make molds and make multiple parts in real colors. We have pressure tanks, we have bell jars, we have heating chambers, we have all the, the equipment we need to make very low volume and very efficient, very quick models. And this is our newest wet lab where we'll set up and do experiments using LabVIEW or one of the products that allow us to, do, to gather data and make sure that it's working. This is kind of the science. We have a group of designers on staff who we call our science group. So they're the ones who are responsible for setting up and, and doing one-up things like this gizmo here, uh, where we'll test things and make sure that, that we're getting the, the results that we need. It's another one of our tools, a vacuum former. It's a home-built one, by the way. We have our paint booth. This is our model lab. This machine shop is for wood and epoxy and dusty things separated intentionally from the machine shop that use, does metal and plastics. We have a four foot by eight foot router, CNC router, which we can make gigantic parts on. We have all the wood shop tools, a table saw, band saw, we have another CNC mill in the corner. So this is an area where we can supplement the other machine shop with a, a second set of tools. Uh, this is also an area where we can set up and demold the plastic parts that are being molded using our silicon molds. Now we're entering our materials warehouse. And in the warehouse we have our water jet which is one of the great inventions of the late 20th century. Um, this will cut anything with a stream of water with abrasive in it. We do all of our sheet metal work on it, where we'll machine a flat pattern like this, and then we'll fold it up into the shape, the eventual shape that it needs to be. So we can do all of our sheet metal work. This is another time-saving thing. In the past, we'd have to send this out to a sheet metal shop, and some days or weeks later, we'd get parts back. Now we can get them overnight. This is an interesting uh, example of water jetting. We took a sheet of ordinary glass and cut a spiral in it. This has no other purpose than to play with. This is a granite gear for the Flintstone crowd. We cut anything on this. And this is our sheet metal forming materials where we can fold and shear and form sheet metal parts. Here's an example of what that four foot by eight foot router can cut. This is a, a big bezel for a product that we designed. This is our class 10,000 clean room. It's not set up for clean work right now. We have a upcoming laser project that we're setting it up for. It's a very useful room. We can set it up for project specific. 
And this is what we fondly call Area 51. It's a multi-purpose area where we can fabricate multiples of particular projects. Uh, we do not manufacture at Omnica. We feel that, that product development and manufacturing are two very different types of work. Um, so we do very low volume uh, prototypes, alpha and beta both. This is an area where we can assemble things in quantity. In this case, we wanted a particular set of colors and we used uh, homemade equipment to, to make those materials. The challenges of model making are never ending. There are always new things you want to accomplish. This is an area we call the atrium. And the atrium is, includes our largest multimedia room, seats 35 people and this nice area out here. And you may notice there are no Omnica identifiers or symbols or logos in this area. We intentionally left it as a autonomous area with its own entry so that people can come in and have focus groups. They can talk to investors. They can come in here and comfortably meet and have a sense of credibility so they can be pretend this is their area and use it to their, their best effect. And then the rest of the time, it's another one, it's our fourth multimedia working room where we have a ceiling mounting, mounted uh, projector and a lot of seating so we can have those remote meetings to report what we've been working on. So we've completed a 360 degree circuit of our operation and I hope you enjoy it and thank you very much.